Well, turn with me to 1 John chapter 4, verse 18. And today we are in week 4 of a series entitled, The Spirit of Fear. And tonight's message is called, Casting Out Fear. Everybody say that with me one time. Casting Out Fear. Come on, say it again. Casting Out Fear. You know, fear has no place in your life. If you're a believer, you're a person of faith. The just shall walk by faith and not by fear. So say, no fear in my heart, in my mind, or in my words. Faith only. Give the Lord a praise. Amen. Hallelujah. I like the sound of that. 1 John 4 and 18. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. Because fear involves torment. But he who fears has not been made perfect in love. Now let's look at it in the amplified version as well. There is no fear in love. Dread does not exist. But full grown, complete, perfect love turns fear out of doors. And expels every trace of terror. For fear brings with it the thought of punishment. And so he who is afraid has not reached the full maturity of love, is not yet grown into love's complete perfection. Faith and fear are the distinguishing elements of the quality of your life. Do you believe that? People of faith is life and life abundantly. People of fear is terror, dread, oppression. Come on. And God wants us to be people of faith. Now, here's the interesting thing, that you can be a believer and still be filled with fear. And that's not the will of God. Did you hear what I said? That's not God's will for your life. God wants you to be filled with faith and not fear. So tonight we're going to cast the fear out. Now, we know from 2 Timothy 1 and 7 that God has not given us the spirit of fear. Fear comes as a spirit. Uh, the word spirit means breath or wind. It, it is an external force that is applied to the believer. And what it is trying to do is get inside your thinking. It wants to take up residency in your thinking. It doesn't want you thinking thoughts of prayer, uh, faith. It doesn't want you speaking faith. It wants you thinking fear and worry and anxiety and panic. Anybody know what I'm talking about tonight? It wants to keep you up late at night. It wants to ruin you. So listen, people of faith, it's life and life abundantly. People of fear, it's life reduced dramatically. I choose to be a person of faith. I choose life. I choose blessings. I choose the promises of God. How about you? Praise the Lord. Well, we're, there is no fear in love. Perfect love casts out fear. Now, how does love cast out fear? Well, you say, if I'm in fear, who should I be loving? Well, of course, we love the Lord our God with all our heart and soul and strength. We love our neighbor as ourself. Of course, we do that. But the revelation in this passage is not about our love for God and our love for neighbor. It's about how much God loves us. Perfect love. If you have an understanding of the love of God in your life, that, that means fear does, not, fear does not have a place to take a foothold in your life. Amen. Come on. If you understand how much God loves you, then you can trust Him. God loves me, so I trust His Word. God loves me, so I know He's on my side. God loves me, so He is for me. He is not against me. God loves me. How do I know God loves me? Romans 8 and 5. God has demonstrated His love for us. That while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. How do I know God loves me? The cross. I said the cross. And because of the cross, because that love was so uh, demonstrated so dramatically in the cross, then I know grace has been applied to my life. Grace is unmerited favor. I have favor. I have grace. I have the promises of God. I have the blessings of God. And therefore, when fear tries to come against my thinking, lack, limit, loss, sickness, poverty, depression, oppression, I can just say, no, hang on just a second. I do not receive that. God loves me too much for that. God loves me. He went to the cross for me. So by his stripes, I am healed. Hallelujah. The chastisement for my peace was upon him. Hallelujah. 
His prosperity is now my prosperity. Come on, say amen. I'm a joint heir with Jesus Christ. I'm seated with Christ in heavenly places. Because I know that Jesus loves me, I do not have to suffer thinking that I'm going to live a life of limits and lack and loss because God loves me too much for, to let that happen to me. Amen. Come on, say amen. amen. Come on, say amen. amen. Turn with me to our text verse, 2 Timothy 1 and 7. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but power and love and a sound mind. What has God given us? He's given us His power. He's given us His love. He's given us the mind of Christ, a sound mind. But what has He not given us? He has not given us the spirit of fear. So what must we do about it? We must cast it out. We must expel it. We not, must not put up with it. We must take a stand against it. Because again, fear is an external force that is trying to get into your thinking. If it can get into your thinking, it can get into your heart. If it can get into your heart, it can get into your language. If it can get into your mouth, then it will start to direct your life because your life is directed by your words. Look at it again. Say it with me. Everybody read it out loud. God has not given us a spirit of fear. Well, if God didn't give it to us, don't receive it. Say, it's not for me. Say, I do not receive the spirit of fear in my life. Look with me in Romans 8 and 15. Why do you not want a spirit of fear in your life? Because the spirit of fear is the spirit of bondage. It says that we have not received the spirit of bondage again unto fear. What is fear trying to do? Freeze you up. It's trying to freeze up your faith, freeze up your callings, freeze up your giftings and your anointing. It's trying to stop you in your tracks. It's trying to bring you into bondage, into paralysis. And God has not given us that. But we have again the spirit of adoption whereby we cry, Abba, Father, you did not receive. You did not receive. So to say, I do not receive it. Not receive. You did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear. Yet it's knocking on your door. Don't open the door. It's calling you on the phone. Don't answer the phone. It's coming to you in the mail. Don't open it up. Say, I don't receive it. I'm not signing for it. It's not for me. Say, no fear. Why? Because you know God loves you. And because God loves you, He's on your side. God wants the very best for you. God went to the cross for you. God has given you grace. God has given you favor. God's given you anointing. God's given you callings. God's given you giftings. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Fear is the wrong mindset. Mm. Fear is the wrong mindset. And yet it gets into our minds so very easily and so very quickly. But fear is the wrong mindset. Creflo Dollar said, worry is fear-based meditation. Wow. Yeah. Worry is fear-based meditation. Worry is a captive mind. Worry is the active mind of doubt. Yeah. Worry is fear-based meditation meditation. Now let's look at this for a second. Go back to 1 John 4 and 18 in the Amplified. It says, fear brings with it the thought of punishment. Thoughts come with fear. Fear has a voice. Fear has thoughts. Fear has the voice that keeps you up at night. Fear has the voice that steals your peace and steals your joy and steals your contentment and steals your energy and steals your motivation and steals your plan and steals your hope. Fear is the thing is that keeps you in bed saying, if I get out of bed today, it's going to be a terrible day. Every day is Monday, so I'm going to stay in bed and eat my Cheetos and come on. <laughs> Fear, it is a constant, worry is a constant meditation of fear. How bad it is and how bad it's going to get. It's going to get worse and it's going to get worse and it's going to get worse. Look with me at Job chapter 3 verse 25. Job said, the thing that I greatly feared has come upon me. That's the law of attraction. 
The thing that I have greatly feared has come upon me. And let me tell you how it works. When what you fear comes upon you, it starts coming upon you over and over and over again if you don't get a handle on it. The servants came to Job and said, the enemy just stole all your cows. And while that servant was giving a report, the next servant came and gave a more negative report. And while he was giving a report, another servant came and gave even a worse report. And that's what fear does. Fear says, this bad news, well, it's bad, but it may get worse. And it may get worse than that. And, it, and your mind just runs with it. Has anybody ever been there before? You know what I'm talking about. The thing that I greatly feared has come upon me. That's the law of attraction. Misery is a magnet. Fear is a magnet for misery. And so what you fear, the thing that I fear, you're inviting it to come. Faith is the same thing. What I have faith for has come upon me. Hallelujah. <laughs> what I have faith for has come upon me. The blessings of the Lord, the healing of the Lord, the breakthrough of the Lord, power of the Lord, the anointing of the Lord. That thing that I greatly feared, that thing that I greatly faithed has come upon me. Praise the Lord. Fear or worry is the active mind of doubt. And doubt is the, great, is the gateway to all fear. When you're in doubt and you're in worry, that means that you are a double-minded man. E even if you're a believer, you can be in doubt and worry. Jesus said to the man who had the, the child that was filled with uh, demons, Jesus said, if you can believe, all things are possible to him who believes. And what did the man say? I believe, but help my unbelief. You can believe one thing, that Jesus is Son of God and He's your Savior, you're going to heaven, but you can absolutely unbelieve that He's going to do anything good for you in this life, in the here and now. I believe He's my Savior, but I don't know that He'll save me today. I believe that He's the healer, but I don't know that He'll heal me today. I believe, but help my unbelief and that's the gateway to fear and we've got to close that gateway look at your neighbor right now and say close that door because a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways worry says I have no favor I have <laughs> that's right I have no faith I have no favor I have no future but that's not what faith says and what we have to do is cast down and expel fear and worry from our lives. And this is how Paul told us to do it. Turn with me to Philippians chapter 4, verse 6. We're going to renew our mind to faith and expel fear from our lives in four easy steps. Look at your neighbor and say, four easy steps. Amen. Step number one, give voice to your faith. Step number two, give place for peace. Step number three, fix your thoughts on what you know to be true. Step number four, do the word. Let's look at those real quickly. Amen. Step number one, give voice to your faith. Are you in Philippians chapter four? Look at verse six. I'm going to read the New Living Translation just because it clarifies things. It says, don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Isn't that good? Don't worry about anything. Turn to your neighbor right now and say, don't worry about anything. Say, pray about everything. Yeah, now watch this. Pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank Him for all He has done. Amen. Now, what Paul is trying to get us to do is to begin to give voice to our faith. Tell God what you need and give Him praise for what He has done. Begin speaking out your faith. Well, listen. Let's say you, what you need is a healing. Let's say what you need is a financial breakthrough. Whatever it is that you might need. You, you need to tell God what you need. But then the follow-up to that is give Him thanks 
for what he has done. Well, specifically, that is to thank him for what he has done on the cross. Because it's what he has done on the cross that applies to what you need right now. You see, we could, we could be uh, very general about it and say, uh, Lord, I need a financial breakthrough, and I thank you, Lord, that the sun shined on me, and I thank you that there was a rainbow in the heavens yesterday, and I thank you, Lord, that my cat had kittens, and I thank you, Lord, that... I mean, we could just be very general about this, but we shouldn't be general about it because what you need is something very specific. You need a touch of healing in your body. And so you say, Lord, I need, now you're, you're giving voice to your faith, I need healing in my body, and I thank you for what you did on the cross, for by your stripes I am healed. Are, are you with me now? You, you begin to give voice to faith, but you frame it in the cross. You frame it. Frame it in what Jesus did at the cross because what do you want? You want grace applied to your situation. And grace comes from the cross of Jesus Christ. And so, Lord, I need a financial breakthrough. Lord, I need healing in my body. And then you go right back to thanking him for at the cross when Jesus said, it is finished. The debt is paid in full. My healing was paid for. My breakthrough was paid for. My poverty was paid for. My sin was paid for. My restored mind was paid for. We could go on and on. The alpha to the omega was paid for. And you give voice to that. You say, thank you, Lord, that my need has already been met in the cross. Amen. So I praise you for it. I praise you for it. I praise you for it. That's why you can praise God in the midst of your battle. You're not waiting to see the results. The, the results already have occurred 2,000 years ago. You praise Him in the midst of your battle because you're praising Him for what He has already done Amen. to secure your breakthrough. Yeah. Hallelujah. 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 Philippians 4 and 6. Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need. And thank Him for all. Everybody say all. 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 Is there anything He has not done? Did Jesus say it was paid in full? Yes. Yeah. Did He say it was finished? Does he have to go back to the cross to accomplish something else? No, it's done. He has done it all. So you can thank him for all that he has done. Jesus teaches us in Matthew 6 and 31. You have to look at this. Matthew 6 and 31. We're talking about giving voice to your faith. In doing so, we expel worry, we expel fear by giving voice to our faith. Jesus said in Matthew 6 and 31, Therefore, do not worry, the King James says, take no thought, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? You, you do not take a thought saying, this is what Jesus said, do not take a thought saying, do not worry saying, because once you give voice to that worry, voice to that concern, voice to that fear, what you're doing is activating it in your life. You may have a thought, but once that thought gets down into your heart and you utter it out of, your, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Once it's gotten down into your heart and now you're giving voice to it, you're giving your thought life, that fear life, that worry life, that anxiety, you're giving it permission to take action in your life. He said, therefore, take no thought saying. Don't utter it. Don't give voice to it. Utter your faith. Give voice to your faith. Speak your faith. Yeah. Hallelujah. Not your fears. Hallelujah. 
Give voice to your faith. Speak faith rather than fear. That's why it says in Romans 10, 8 through 10, what does it say? The word is near you. It's in your mouth and in your heart. You've got to get the word of faith in your mouth and in your heart. You, you do not undo a thought with another thought. You undo a thought with a word. Amen. If you have thoughts of fear, speak words of faith. <laughs> you got to get that. If, if fear and anxiety and worry and oppression is rattling around in your brain, how you cancel that and how you overcome that is by getting in the Word of God and begin speaking out words of faith that are more powerful than thoughts of fear and that cancels out those thoughts. That's why Paul says you've got to have the word of faith in your mouth and in your heart. For with the mouth you confess the Lord Jesus. You believe in your heart, verse 10. For with the heart one believes and with the mouth one confesses unto Salvation unto healing, unto prosperity, unto uh, peace, unto restoration, unto breakthrough, unto anything. Anything that's within the realm of God's grace, which is everything. The Alpha to the Omega. Glory to God. Hallelujah. It's all in salvation. It's all in grace. So with the heart you believe, but with the mouth you, you make confession. You give voice to, unto your salvation. That's why, uh, that's why we see in Joshua 1 and 8, this book of the law shall, shall uh, remain in my mouth. And I'll meditate it on both day and night that I may observe to do according to all that is written therein. It's got to be in your mouth. It's got to be in your heart. The meditations of your heart and the words of your mouth are faith, not fear. Faith, not fear. Because if fear becomes an utterance of your mouth, you have given those thoughts of fear permission to become active in your life. What did James tell us in James 3? It's the words that turn the horse. It's the words that turn the ship. Words set direction for your life. And words of fear set direction for your life. Words of faith set direction for your life. It's just opposite directions. <laughs> Come on, say amen. 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 So you're still in Philippians chapter 4. So it says don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need. Thank Him for what He has done. So number one is give voice to your faith. Number two, give place to peace. A peace that passes all understanding. Once you've, got, once you've got faith settled up in your heart, once you've got that word active in your heart, word active in your mouth, then we go to the next verse, Philippians 4 and 7. Then you will experience God's peace, which Amen. exceeds everything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and your minds as you live in Christ Jesus. Once faith is active in your thinking, once faith is active in your speaking, then you give room for the peace of God to garrison your heart and garrison your mind. And let me tell you, you will know when peace has settled in. The, the enemy can dance on your head all week long. But when you take authority over the enemy and you say, no, I cast you down. I cast you out. I do not receive that thought. The Word of God says that God loves me beyond measure. God accepts me by grace. God seeks to do me good all day long. That's what the Word of God says. So I trust the Word. I trust God. I trust His promises. I trust what grace has done in my life. So I do not receive that negative report. I do not receive that word of fear. I do not receive meditation of worry in my life. Life. No, I receive and give utterance to the Word of God, and then you will feel that enemy, that oppressive force, that spirit of fear lifting up off of you, and the peace of God, 
Hallelujah. The peace of God will come and garrison your heart and garrison your mind, and you're going to have the best night's sleep you've ever had in your life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So number two, give place to peace. Number three, fix your thoughts on what you know to be true. Philippians 4 and 8. Now, dear brothers and sisters, one final thing. Fix your thoughts on what you know to be true and honorable and right and pure and lovely and admirable. Think about things that are excellent and worthy of praise. What are the kinds of things that you should be thinking about when the spirit of fear is dancing on your head? What's the kind of things that you should turn your thoughts to when the enemy is trying to oppress you with anxiety and fear? Well, the enemy wants you to think about lack and limits and loss and how bad it could possibly get. But the Spirit of God and the peace of God wants you to think about life and life abundantly. How you're going to be changed from glory to glory into the image of Christ Jesus. How good it is going to get. Hallelujah. And so what I would recommend is when you think about the things that are excellent and worthy of praise. The things that are true and honorable and right and pure and lovely and admirable. What I do is I go back to the calling of God on my life. And I say, now Lord, I know you called me. Lord, I know you have favored me. Lord, I know you have anointed me. And there's nothing that's happening in this world that can steal my calling, steal my anointing, steal my favor, steal my righteousness in God, steal my place. I'm a child of the living God. There's nothing in the world that can take my childhood away. I am related. I am a joint heir. I, hallelujah. And when you start focusing on the things that are true, the things that cannot change, the things that are immutable, unchangeable, and you realize, now wait a second, the enemy has no power over me. He has no ability over me. No, 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 no. I'm created in the image of God. God lives on the inside of me. I'm the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I'm a joint heir with Jesus Christ. I'm seated with God in heavenly places by Christ Jesus. The enemy can't change any of that. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So number three is you fix your thoughts on what you know to be true. And number four is do the word. Amen. Do the word. Do the word. You, there comes a point where you put the word into action. There comes a time you can give the word utterance. You can have the Word of God in your mind. Have the mind of Christ. You can have the Word of faith in your heart. You can have the Word of faith in your mouth. But there comes a time when you've got to put that faith into action. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. There comes a time when you've got to step out of the boat onto solid water. Not sinking water. There comes a time when you can't just be a hearer of the word anymore, but you've got to be a doer of the word. It's like unto a man who builds his house on a rock and not on the sinking sand. There comes a time when you have to pray the prayer of faith. Comes, come on, church. There comes a time when you've got to sow the seed comes a time when you've got to stand up and be counted. Amen. There comes a time when you've got to be the hands of God extended. Amen. There comes a time when even by, if you're standing by yourself, you still got to stand. Amen. And having done all, stand. Amen. comes a time when you've got to put on the whole armor of God. You've got to put on that breastplate of righteousness, that helmet of salvation. You've got to lift up the shield of faith and start swinging the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. There comes a time. Hallelujah. Comes a time when you got to do the word. Philippians 4 and 9. Keep putting into practice all you have learned and received from me. Everything you have heard from me and saw me doing. Then the God of peace will be with you. 
God has not given us a spirit of fear. So don't receive it. What did, what did uh, John tell us? John said, perfect love casts out fear. That's the only way you can treat fear is cast it out. Do not receive it, but cast it out. Don't let it get into your thinking. Renew your mind to faith. How do we do that? Number one, we give voice to our faith. Number two, we give place to peace. Number three, we fix our thoughts and focus our thoughts on what we know to be true. And number four, we do the word. Did you receive anything out of this tonight? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah.